Hey guys, so today we're going to talk about passion and trying your hardest to pretend that you are above emotions as a programmer. So let's get into it. Now, for this to make any type of sense, we need to tell a short story. So the other day I was working as as per usual, and I had the good fortune of getting to spend some time with my boss, doing some pair programming and that sort of thing, basically. We were working on this specific feature that was, you know, the sort of feature that you really want two pair of eyes on. At least one pair of eyes that, you know, he's, he's quite a lot more experienced when it comes to software development in general, and it's also kind of valid to know that he's one of the founders and he's one of the people who I hear he, let's just yes just just yeah let's just be honest he wrote the whole goddamn code base up to a certain point but then of course the company kind of took off and now we're more people working on it right so we kind of work and so basically what I st I you know I just I'm just writing some software and then he kind of stops me and he says hmm Frederick, I, I really don't like this. And I go, okay, well, what's the issue? Well, you see this thing you do where you list out all the variables, like, you know, vertically, and then you put them as input. I mean, it's, you know, we do actually have a standard practice where, where we use the name, param use name parameters instead. And then I kind of go, um, Okay, well, yeah, we could use name parameters, but there's like six input parameters already. And if we put that on a vertical line, it's going to go outside of the, uh, like, it's even larger than 120 characters in, in the horizontal direction. Can't speak. Anywho. And he goes, yeah, okay, yeah, but we kind of have a standard right around this. And I go, that's odd. I didn't know we had a standard about this because I, I've been working here for quite a few months and had hundreds of code reviews and none of my other, uh, none of my other coworkers seems to have this sort of issue. And he says, well, but yeah, but like, let's talk about scoping. And I go, oh, okay. Well, you see, do you have, have you heard about the, the, like the philosophy or like the best coding practice that states that you should keep your scope as small as possible. And I kind of go, no, no, I've never heard about that. You see, if you ha the more things you have in your scope, the harder it is to understand the logic. Uh, okay, can you elaborate a little bit? Yeah, because you see, when, when I as a programmer start working on a piece of software and I have all these variables and stuff then I immediately try to understand the whole context of what the method or the function is doing and then by understanding all the pieces that make up this piece of software I can understand the whole and I kind of go oh okay well the way that I kind of do it is that I just like the code to be readable and I'll usually I kind of look at what the signature is stating, or the method name, and the return type, and then I look at the ret like the return values, and then I kind of go, okay, this is roughly what it's supposed to be doing, and if I need to go further and really understand the exact pieces of everything, I kind of start looking at the whole. For me, readability is the important thing. Yeah, yeah, but like you know this, right? That scoping is important, and it's important to have like less, the less code you have in your method the better it is. And I kind of go, how in the world can the fact that I put my values in a variable as a list, instead of just putting them as input parameters with named, named parameters, like, how can that in any way have an impact on your comprehension of this code? Is the code bad? No, no, it's just that it's not written in the way that we have decided. And I go, but you, I just told you, we have, like, the, our software team has been working for months and this has never been an issue. What's the problem? And guys, we finally arrive at this magical point. And this is, this, this is the social point, guys. This is my boss. He pays my salary. 
he has the power to fire me if he wanted to. And now I finally go and I say, could it be that you are the person who wants this to happen? Because I, could it poss be possible that this, hasn't, this, this doesn't have anything to do with anybody else? It's your personal preference that we're talking about here. And you can kind of see the... Uh, like, that didn't sit well. He's like, oh well, yeah, maybe... Like he didn't really want to touch that part, like that possibility. Like, it feels bad because of this thing I keep telling you guys. Programmers, some programmers, I don't know why, but they have this need to justify and prove and be logical about every aspect of whatever they are deciding on. This person, like my boss, he's a really nice guy, but it's the, the, we kind of boil down to the to. To one single thing and that is that the reason why we're having this argument has nothing to do whether or not the code is consistent or that it's like like all these different rules that he and a lot of other coders want to make up it has to do with his personal preferences the way that he likes to write software and he simply wants me to write software in the way that he wants to write it and that brings us to a better discussion where I said all right are you sure you really want to push for all these rules? And he said, yeah, because consistency is important, Frederick. You know, you need to get better at that. You're not very good at being consistent. I go, well, I follow all the practices that I think make sense. But if you're, we're going to talk about how I declare my variables, then why not talk about how to, like, how to name a Boolean? Is it going to be is valid or valid? Are we going to talk about that sort of thing. Are we going to talk about grouping? How are we going to group our, our declarations in a, in, in a function? Because let's be honest here, we will get to a point where this is just silly. I understand that there's desire to create software, the right software that looks consistent with everything else, that one single person wrote it all. I think that's great. You should be consistent, but you have to kind of scope it somehow. You, ha you can't go into every niche like remember there's so much mental and cognitive overhead just remembering all these tiny little rules that at the end of the day doesn't matter at all it does not matter if you declare a variable instead or, or two instead of i don't know referencing the value directly in a in a method call it does not matter it does not in any way affect the comprehension of the software it's very subjective Three people will look at this software and think three different things. The import, uh, that's at least my argument. And we kind of, you know, we discuss back and forth. So guys, what I can tell you is that this never goes away. You will, ne like, you will always have, this, have these people who want to justify to you that something should work in a certain way. And when you really burrow down to it, like get really down into it, and you really talk about it, it has to do with a personal preference. And it is impossible to win this battle. Um, or if there, if there is even such a thing as a battle here, but let's be honest here. Being opinionated when it comes to software is something everybody does. It can happen to anybody. It can happen to the junior, the senior, to whoever. And this is why it's so important, I think, personally, that you have the social capacity to have an open discussion about this. Because remember, this, like, I, I, he was kind of sort of shooing me out over this when in fact the problem, and I told him, I told him this as well, the problem isn't me. The problem is that you sit here, you, you're right now trying to enforce a rule that only matters to you. It doesn't matter to anybody else at the company. No one else cares. And they haven't cared for months. There, this has never ever been a pro an issue until this very moment when you're sitting here talking about it. So where is the problem? And we kind of talked about it and, uh, and you know everything was fine but in this this moment if you had been a junior or if i had been less secure in myself i would have probably just folded and apologized and just let him go you know go on his merry way maybe that should have been the thing i should have done but it's not what i did and i ur urge you to have the same sort of mindset because sometimes guys believe it or not you have to be able to kind of stand up for yourself 
Not saying that this was such a situation, but this is one of those occasions where your social skills actually play in, play in more and your ability to handle a tense situation has more to, like, is going to affect your job more than your coding skills. Because remember, standing up to your boss or like just calling him out on something, that's something that not a lot of people would like, like to do. But it's going to be something that on occasion is going to be required of you. At least that's the way I feel about it. Have a great day.